All right, we can go ahead and get started. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, this is our fifth public engagement conversation of our first round of uh, conversations on the aquatic facilities. Tonight, we're gonna talk about Lincoln Pool, Marion Franklin Pool, and Sayota Southland Spray Park. So in case you need to leave early, um, after the meeting, we'll post the presentation and the video of the presentation tonight on our website at columbusaquatics.org. Um, and additionally, we'll put a link in the chat uh, for you to sign up to receive emails on the project. Um, if you click on Aquatics Capital Improvement Plan Updates at the link that'll be in the chat, um, you'll receive all of our emails. So firstly, um, we'll talk about some Zoom protocols. Uh, stay on mute if you're not talking. Um, when you join tonight, you are automatically muted. And there will be a chance later for you to unmute and uh, have your say. Um, you can use the chat feature to ask questions and provide feedback. Uh, there'll be some poll questions tonight that you can answer and we'll have one shortly here to show you how they work. Um, and then I don't think we're gonna have breakout rooms tonight because our attendance is a little bit low. Uh, so we'll just stay in this room and then we'll talk about the facilities then. So here's your first poll question. Uh, you'll see it pop up on the screen. And the question is how many people are on this Zoom call? We know some of you join with family members or with children, and so we want to know how many people we're talking to tonight. You can just make your selection there. All right, so there's one person on the Zoom call with you. Thanks, Thanks for sharing that. We'll have several poll questions pop up tonight and they'll work similarly, um, and I'll make sure to share the results each time. For our agenda tonight, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the current aquatics programming in the city of Columbus. We'll introduce you to the process that we're going through at the moment. We'll talk a little bit about the findings to date. Um, we'll skip the breakout rooms, but we'll talk specifically about these facilities, uh, your likes, dislikes, concerns, and what you wanna see in the future. And um, then we'll have some final thoughts. So this is the staff that's been working behind the scenes on the project. Uh, we have architects, we have rec and parks experts, and we have staff of Columbus Recreation and Parks Department as well. So the city of Columbus has 16 aquatic facilities currently. Uh, you may be familiar with some or most of them. Uh, there's one indoor facility. There's now four spray parks with the addition of Linden Spray Park. There's three downtown fountains, and then there are eight swimming pools. And here you can see where they are scattered throughout the city. Uh, tonight, like I said, we're gonna be talking about Lincoln Pool, Marion Franklin Pool, and the Scioto Southland Spray Park all on the south side. You may be asking yourself, uh, why are we doing this? What, what is this all about? And so uh, Columbus recognizes that a lot of the aquatic facilities need improvements in order to better serve residents. And so what we're doing tonight is just the first part of a long-term plan that's being put together uh, to invest in the aquatics division over the coming years. And so this is the first round of public meetings. We'll have more coming up. Um, and uh, the very first outcome of this process is already being put into place uh, as Glenwood and Windsor pools are in concept design for their renovation. And so additionally, um, as, as part of the understanding that City of Columbus has, uh, when they're looking at how to invest in these facilities, uh, they've determined that these are the goals that they're looking at. And so it includes things like expanding and upgrading um, the aquatic facilities and programming with a focus on health and wellness, promoting safety and security at the sites, increasing access to parks and aquatic facilities, and increasing the number and quality of the park system. And then finally, um, you'll be asked some questions later about how the city can best look into um, creating a sustainable operating revenue generation uh, for the aquatics programming. So from you, uh, we need your feedback. Uh, you're here because you found us either through our website, through the email mailers, through the signs in the neighborhoods, uh, but we need your feedback and it's really important that we get it. Um, this is how we're gonna shape our final plan. We wanna hear from you and know what you would like to see implemented. So the process is a five-step process, and right now we're still on step one. We're still in the gather phase where we're gathering information. Uh, we'll take all the information that we've gotten from all of these uh, public engagement meetings, and uh, we'll put it all together. We'll make some decisions, and we'll come back to you for additional feedback 
um, later in the summer or in the early fall uh, as we look at concepts for each of these sites. And part of the phase uh, that we're in right now, this gather phase, um, we've reviewed all the sites, we've reviewed, reviewed previous master plans, uh, we looked at aquatic utilization, scheduling capacity, the programming offered, um, operational budgets, uh, demographics, and projected growth patterns of the City of Columbus. And so right now, uh, we're assessing the adequacy of these facilities through meeting with you, talking with you, through uh, visualizing at the site, um, observing how patrons and staff are engaging with their environments as well. Here you can see our demographic analysis for Lincoln Pool. Uh, we set a two mile radius around each of the facilities. Uh, so Lincoln Pool serves a population of over 46,000 uh, with an average household size of 2.3 and a median age of just over 37. What we like to look at with each of these facilities is the breakdown of the age distribution uh, because younger patrons uh, need different amenities than older patrons. And so we like to look at how the population breaks down. And so on the left there, you can see the age distribution of the youth broken into the, um, some different graphs there. And then on the right, the pie chart will show you the breakdown of all of the ages. And so here you can see we have 22% 50 and older. We did the same for Marion Franklin. Uh, Marion Franklin is a slightly older age at 40 and a half a slightly larger average household size, just over two and a half, and a smaller service population of around 29,000. We did the same age breakdown here. Um, you can see the breakdown of the under 18 age on the left, and then the general population on the right. And then finally, for site of Southland Spray Park, the median age there was 41.3. Uh, again, just over two and a half for the average household size, and a service area of over 19,000. So here you can see we have 25% at 50 and older and over 60% uh, 18 to 49. And when we broke down that 17 and under, you see there on the left, uh, the distribution of the youth age. We have another poll question for you. How many times do you visit your pool or spray park on average per summer? You'll see that pop up. You have a few options, once a month, a few times a month, once a week, a few times a week, every day, and we have not visited the pool. Go ahead and make your selection. Give you a couple more seconds. Okay, so it looks like a few times a week. That's great. So if you're here, uh, we're assuming you've taken our survey. If you haven't, we'll put a link to it in the chat. Um, we had uh, about 25 questions on the survey and we've been reviewing those answers uh, as the survey has been open. Um, so we pulled out a few of those responses that we wanted to highlight. And so one of the questions asked, how long do you travel to use the aquatic facility you use most? Uh, and here you could see that uh, over 90% of the respondents travel 20 minutes or less to visit the facilities. So that's good. Uh, we asked what type of pool user you are. And here you could select several. But as you can see, the largest uh, percentage there, the 70% said that they use the pool for recreational swim or for fun. Uh, the next highest responses were for children's use of recreational swim or fun, and then lap swimming and swimming lessons uh, came in third. We also asked a question um, about swimming. Uh, what are the three most significant community benefits of public swimming and aquatics? Uh, and here you could see the uh, highest response was swimming lessons to develop swimming as a life skill. Second place was year round exercise in a healthy lifestyle. Um, and then coming in next was a place to cool off during the summer, enjoyment and quality time with family. Uh, this graph is a lot to look at. Uh, if you focus on the orange and the light blue, uh, those are the most supportive and likely supportive answers. Um, and the question was, how supportive would you be of each of these different um, 
improvements that could be made. And so the highest, the highest uh, supportive response was to increase the swim season, followed by upgrading pool houses and bath houses. Um, next up was providing additional shade, warm water for showers, more seating areas, and adding lockers to store personal items. We asked an open-end question about what other amenities would you use at a site? Uh, and here you can see that the larger the font, the more often the word was stated. And so some of the biggest responses there were hot tub, classes, showers, snack bar, kids, uh, lap lanes, splash pad. And so there were a lot of good responses there. Um, taking into account uh, all the responses that we've gotten in the survey, uh, we put together some amenities and programming that the city uh, is thinking of offering at some of the sites. And so we've divided those into four different categories, uh, which is adventure, sports, fitness, and programs. And so I will go through those in a minute. Uh, but first, I'm curious to know what programming that the city offers do you currently use? We'll have a poll pop up. You may have to scroll down to see all the answers there and you can choose three. Uh, so we have swim team and stroke clinic, dive clinic, swim lessons, water aerobics, therapeutic recreation water fitness, open lap swim, recreational open swim, master swim, rental capabilities, and lifeguarding or water safety instructor classes. So we're just curious to know what you're currently using. I'll give you another few seconds. Okay, it looks like uh, water aerobics is the top response there, but people are also using the swim team of the stroke clinic, rec recreational open swim, the rental capabilities and lifeguarding or water safety instructor classes. So thank you for sharing. So when we're looking at aquatic trends, um, the first one that we were looking at was sports. Um, and so sports can be things like water volleyball, water handball, water basketball, um, or something like Wibbits, which you see in the lower uh, left corner there, uh, which is an inflatable sort of ninja course, uh, obstacle course that can be moved from site to site. Uh, we looked at aquatic trends in fitness, which includes things like aqua cycling, aqua yoga balance programs, water aerobics, or a separate lap pool for lap swimming. We looked at programming offerings, um, such as health and wellness or fitness programs, something like dive-in movies, or even log rolling. Uh, when we're looking at trends for spray parks, uh, there's a lot of different features that can be included um, in a good spray park design. Um, and they include items like inclusive play or universal design um, so that children or uh, members of the community of all different abilities can use it. There's play structures, which are like uh, playgrounds in the water. There's dumping buckets uh, and those fill with water and can either be dumped via a button or when they're full. Uh, we can incorporate natural elements, uh, as you can see on the lower right, uh, which is, in this case, fountains coming out of natural rock elements. In spray parks, there's also spray funnels, uh, which can be aimed at, at uh, friends or enemies. Uh, the ground sprays, which are small fountains. Um, there's inward sprays, which create a tunnel effect. And then on the lower right there, you can see rain showers, and those also incorporate a little bit of a natural element. And then finally, when looking at spray parks or at the pool, um, we can include things like shade structures, which can be either uh, canopy style, which is on the upper left, shaded structure on the lower left, uh, seating areas in a natural, uh, a natural environment, like on the upper right, um, or sheet, uh, I'm sorry, or shaded seating structures, um, benches and tables and chairs on the lower right. And so I know I just threw a lot at you, uh, but we're gonna have another poll. What programming would you like to see offered at the pool? 
So we're specifically talking about Lincoln Pool and Marion Franklin Pool. We'll have a poll. Again, you may need to scroll down. So some of the options are early morning lap swim or dedicated adult swim hours, swim lessons for all ages, water aerobics, health and wellness, uh, water sports, Wibbit's course, dive in movies, paddleboard yoga, aqua bikes, or scuba lessons. So I believe here you can also choose three. Give you another few seconds. Okay. So it looks like. Uh, swim lessons for all ages, water aerobics, and water sports were at the top of the list. Also votes for early morning lap swim or dedicated adult swim and dive in movies. So thanks for participating. And now when you're thinking of Sarah Southland Spray Park, what amenities would you like to see offered there? We'll have another poll. may need to scroll down. Uh, the options are inclusive play or universal design elements, a play structure, dumping buckets, spray funnels, rain showers, inward sprays, ground sprays, natural elements, shaded structures, and seating. And again, you can pick uh, three, I believe. Give you another couple seconds. All right, let's see, a little bit of everything. Uh, natural elements and shaded structures came in first place there. Uh, seating, ground, spray, ground sprays, rain showers, dumping buckets, and inclusive play or universal design elements also got a vote. So when we're thinking of uh, revenue generation, um, how do you think that Columbus Recreation and Parks financially should support these new amenities and programming? So we'll have a poll pop up. Um, just as a reference for the other 12 municipalities with public pools in Franklin County, uh, the average for adult daily admission is $10, just a little over $10. And for children, uh, it's just under $9 at $8.90. So again, you can pick several. Um, so we have the options of entry price, children 17 and under $1, adults $2 to $5, an annual pool pass of $40 for an individual or $100 for a family, additional charge for early entry to the facility. Um, you can add additional membership opportunities with perks like members only swim time, faster entry to, to the facilities, um, there's also the option to provide partnership opportunities for businesses and also fundraising opportunities for pools, church groups, sports teams, et cetera. I'll give you another few seconds. Okay. So the top, the top uh, vote there was children 17 and under $1 and adults two to $5. Uh, there's also the option for the annual pool pass, $40 for an individual or hundred for a family. Uh, early entry got a vote, partnership opportunities for businesses got a vote and fundraising opportunities for schools and the like also got a vote. So thank you everybody for sharing your thoughts on that. So we're not gonna go into the breakout rooms today because we have a small group, um, but we can just stay here and chat. Um, here's the five questions that we'd like to get your take on. Uh, we can start with any of them. We can start with your thoughts. Um, but so we're looking on feedback on what improvements you'd like to see to each of the facilities, um, what aquatic activities and classes you'd like to see, what aquatic amenities you'd like to see. Uh, and then we wanna hear your thoughts on the safety and security improvements. And then also, if you'd be willing to pay higher fees for the upgraded pools. And so I'm not sure if anyone here tonight, um, if you want to just put in the chat which uh, facility you'd like to talk about, we can start with one. 
Maybe you're all here for the same one. Or if anyone would like to start, that's fine too. Did, did you say you want us to put all our responses in the chat or were we gonna talk? Oh no, we were just gonna start with one of the with one of the sites. And so I was curious uh, which ones you guys were interested in talking about. Someone put in the chat, Marion Franklin. Um, yes, Mayor Franklin is, for me as well. Oh, great. So let's start there. What improvements would you like to see at Marion Franklin? May I speak? Of course. Go ahead. Okay. And um, I'm going to start my video. Well, um, first of all, at Marion Franklin, they did the upgrade with the locker room facility, but there were, there were no changes with the actual physical appearance of the swim pool. It's the exact pool that's been there since the pool's been built. So an upgrade with the pool that I know the managers there, they continuously add water because there's an underground situation going on where there's a leakage of water. And then the other piece as far as an improvement with the pool, and it's just a, this is still operational response. The, the um, filter house is still antiquated it's not upgraded with the ones that they have now where they're pretty much uh technic uh they self-sufficient they run off of you know push a button and you fix your filtration system where the guards have to currently go down and spray off the filter there's still the old filtration system so you know those areas right off the bat improvement of the pool would be there's all this property out there where they could have if they wanted to enlarge the pool or add areas with some of the uh wonderful buckets and and, and areas for lap swimming that all definitely would have been an improvement i would like to have seen at uh, mayor and franklin pool and the filter filtration system at the pool and i say that because now my granddaughter works there <laughs> you know but um those are the just off my top of my mind things I like to see, and that's operational responses. Thank you. So you mentioned lap swimming. Um, are there any other amenities that you'd like to see there? I know there's a very small sort of a children's area. Um, yeah. Yeah. See, every all everything. It's just the three areas. You have the diving area, the share space for where they might you know, lap off two lanes, mark off two lanes for lap swimming. And it's the same area where the um, water aerobics take place. So what happens is in order to have water aerobics, the pool has to be closed down, which is kind of unfair to the other swimmers. Or lap swimming, you only have two lanes. So that you're talking about two, maybe four people doing laps while everyone else is you're an open swim. And I don't think you, you should have a facility that has to shut down just for lap swimming or shut down just for you know, water aerobics or yoga classes or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I think as far as improvement, there's so many things that can be done to that pool. You know, there could have been a sand pit for volleyball. There's, there could be a, a basketball, uh, water basketball, water volleyball. But, you know, just with one shallow water section, one center section and one diving well, that's all you have when there's land that the pool can be expanded. And, and, and then here's the other thing, it's like, why does the city and especially the South End side have to be the last in getting all improvements when there's people that go there regularly all the time? Why is it at the bottom of the list? Why are, you know, why is the South End the last one for the meetings? The South End's the last one to get umbrellas for the lifeguards, the last one to have the shelter house, which I'm happy they have a shelter now for some people to sit you know, why, why is it always last? <laughs> and I know that's not the question. You know, what improvements we like to see? We like to see the volleyball sand pit. We like to see the pool enlarged to have enough space so you don't have to close the facility for just special activities. Right. Oh, well, thank you. We're here to listen. Okay. So I appreciate your comments. Mm -hmm. um, can I add to that too? Those, of those, all, all of those concerns were on my list to speak about as well. So thank you so much, Ms. Cornette, for bringing that up. Okay. Um, I've been going to Marion Franklin, I'm 45, my entire life. And the pool has been the same, except for the addition of 
a small shelter house and the mushroom for kids. It's still the same pool. It still has the same leaking issues, the same filtration issues, and there's all that land. And then I'm watching around the city, you know, driving park, Dodge, they're all getting all these upgrades with a special dedicated kid area, slides, new diving areas. And we at Marion Franklin have gotten nothing. And there's not like there's no land or space for it. There most definitely is, especially with the closure of Fairwood Pool. We've seen an increase in the amount of uh, people who come to Marion Franklin as well. But the pool has not been upgraded at all to accommodate that either. And it gets so crowded so fast that it's hard to enjoy it sometimes. Is there, um, is there a demand for family-friendly activities there, such as the slides, the children's area, and that sort of thing? Absolutely. Yes, there is. Yeah, that, that's a family-oriented area, neighborhood. That's who attends. Mm -hmm. You'll see parents with their children. They pack their lunches, and they come, and they stay. You know, if, if, if it wasn't for COVID with the two-hour time slots, these families would be there, you know, four hours at the pool. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't be there in and out. And, and I, I like the comment that uh, the young lady just made because I'm 60, I'll be 64, and I used to swim at that pool. I used to be on the swim team, and everything is the exact same except for they did remove the locker rooms and put that, uh, you know, outdoor facility there. So, yeah, I, I see it. And I know Columbus, the city of Columbus, really is a wonderful place for families to live in, and our, our pools are just the last thing on the list that gets – anything you know and it's sad thank you for that we've had uh conversations with some of the other groups about the importance of learning to swim and swim lessons for all ages um, i see that was scored well in the polling here um, do you guys think that's accurate for marion franklin mm -hmm. Oh, you're Joy, muted. you're muted. Joy, you're muted. I can't recall what the number said for Marion Franklin as far as. What do you mean? Well, you, Marion Franklin has swim lessons and they are well used. They fill up all the time. Okay. Yeah, there's always a waiting list. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's more of a, it's a continuing to be a high priority and something we need to continue to emphasize is the leading question of that. Yes. So we talked about um, improvements. Was there any other improvements um, that you wanted to mention or anyone else on the call uh, before we move on to maybe the activities? Are you talking about actual specifics in design? No, I mean, everything that you've said, I think covered, you know, the improvements, the activities, the classes, we talked a little bit about it. I just wanna make sure we're covering everything. Well, the one thing which is a nationwide problem is just the hiring of lifeguards and the recruiting of lifeguards. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a problem everywhere getting employees. But I think maybe the incentive can be to encourage the students who are in school to take lifeguarding classes, water classes as a phys ed class, summer or winter, and then maybe the, you know, the pay. So, so my, my issue is, is probably not for this meeting is the budget that's given to the aquatic program. There's never enough money given to keep lifeguards at each school or to hire the lifeguards or to run the pools the efficient way, you know, it takes money. So that's one thing that came to mind. Thank you, those are good ideas. Should we talk about um, safety and security at Marion Franklin? I believe they're operating right now without any uh, security and normally in the past, I think they had the Columbus police there 
the police presence does make a difference. It keeps a lot of riff raff away. However, um, normally if it's 90 degrees, if you got a 90 degree stretch, then you need security. If it's just your normal summer in the eighties, regular customers, uh, security hasn't been an issue because when we see things that happen, it's usually random. They, case in point, the situation that happened at Far East and the young girl got shot. Somebody can ride by there and do that anytime. In fact, you know, it's a wide open situation. But I don't think if, if they do security at all the pools, whatever is chosen for the disc, for the uh, for the aquatics program should be at all the facilities. But I don't think Marion Franklin sticks out like, oh, they need a police there. That's just my personal opinion. I agree with that. I feel safe when I go and I take my son or my nieces and nephews. I don't feel like um, I'm ever in danger. And I agree only when it's like 95 days, you know, three days in a row and we get a, a, a higher crowd or more people um, would, I, would I see a need for that? Do either of you use the lockers or the changing facilities there? I don't, I come pool ready. <laughs> <laughs> but the babies always have to use the restroom, you know. Yeah. Then the last question we were looking to get your feedback on um, was um, if you would be willing to pay higher fees for upgraded pools. And so we had a question with some different options that the city's considering to raise more revenue. Um, we wanted to get maybe some more information on your feedback there. I think the city can raise it if they really make the improvements and make an adjustment, but just to keep it the same and put a shelter house over it and then charge more, that would be so unfair. You know, if they, if, 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 if our city pools and Mayor and Franklin is who we're talking about, if they're designed so that they're competitive in our, our, our neighborhood and our children don't have to go to the outer lining pools to enjoy the water slide and enjoy, and enjoy, um, you know, a lazy river, you know, they go to the other areas to have that. If we had that, sure, we'd be willing to pay more. Absolutely, but I agree. But just to add a, you know, a basketball hoop, that's not fair. No, I wouldn't want to pay more. If you put in that lazy river, put in a couple slides, it, it, it should be a little, cost a little more. Absolutely, I agree with that. And I think most people would agree with that too. And I'll, I'll go ahead and jump in. Um, I came in a little late, um, but my name is Trudy. And on that, I, I definitely would be willing to pay more if there were, um, you know, quality upgrades made because I am one of the uh, residents who go to the other facilities um, because of, you know, where it just seems like Columbus just doesn't care. And so I go to the, uh, mostly I will go over to uh, Grove Corp facilities and, you know, I'll go outside and I'll go to Zumbezi Bay and things like that, even though my child, um, you know, grew up at, at Mar you know, going to Marion Franklin at the, uh, she used to do the summer programs and they taught her how to swim and she loved it. But my baby now is 27. So, um, you know, I just, you know, it's like, well, they don't care. So I'll take my money elsewhere. Thank you for that. Is there, are you speaking specifically of Marion Franklin or of, well, yeah, I guess, cause I guess uh, Lincoln's been updated. Is there anything else that you'd like to share Trudy about uh, Marion Franklin since you joined us late? Um. Just that, you know, if, if there were improvements made, then I would consider uh, going back. I have a 20-month-old uh, and I have an eight-year-old uh, granddaughter now, and I'm very active in their lives, and I'm pretty much the main one. And, you know, I'll say it, I do make a decent income. 
So, you know, if I saw that, then I would consider bringing them. I always kind of like gather their friends and everything and bring them. I mean, I used to like, I used to go to Marion Franklin and I used to go to their, um, their uh, classes that they had, um, I think it was the line dancing. Um, my daughter used to do like the African um, dancing there and I had a great time there, but you know, it, and the, the other issue was there when I was looking for things as far as uh, to do for, for my mom, you know, there wasn't a lot to do for the senior citizens at the time. I don't know what's going on now, but it just wasn't a lot to offer. So I tend to, like I said, I go to the other, um, you know, neighboring cities to get what I need for my family. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you. So is there anything else that anyone wants to share about Marion Franklin and then we can talk about uh, Lincoln? All right, so let's uh, move to Lincoln Pool. Um, are there folks on the call who would like to talk about it? We would love to hear your thoughts about it. Or even um, people who just talked about Marion Franklin, if there's stuff at Lincoln that you think, I think you, you did mention already that uh, some improvements you'd like to see, but if you, you see them at other locations, if you think those should be replicated, that would be helpful too. I, I will say I've, I've never been to Lincoln, so I can't make any comments. So what about um, Sayota Southland Spray Park? Have any of you visited there? I have not. That's the uh, one that used to be called Indian Mound, correct? Correct. Yeah. Um, I, I've been there before. Um, it's it's nice, and now that they've redone the whole rec center and the playground area and outside workout area, it's it's a nice place. I don't have any complaints. They updated it very well. Um, when I have my great niece and nephews that are really small, um, that I don't feel comfortable taking more than one of them to the pool, that's where we go because it's safe for them. They're not getting in the water, and they always have a great time there. Well, thank you, that's good to know. And there's enough uh, different activities there to keep them busy and entertained. Absolutely, and it's not overly crowded. And um, so that's nice too. Any other comments about Sayota Southland or any of the facilities? All right. Well, we can end a little early this evening. Um, we're always open to hear your thoughts if you think of something later. Um, we have an email address, which I'll put up here. Um, here you go, it's info at columbusaquatics.org. So feel free to reach out if you think of something in the meantime. Um, we'll have another, um, well, here you go. So we'll post the presentation on the website um, after this and you'll be able to see the video again. You can share with your friends who weren't able to make it. Um, and then don't forget to sign up to get the emails about the project. Um, we'll be having our final uh, public meeting of the first round next Thursday, and that's for Tuttle Pool and Linden Spray Park.
Um, and then, like I said earlier, we'll be coming back to you in late summer or early fall uh, about the sites again uh, to get some more feedback. So this is not the last you'll hear from us, and we hope that you'll uh, continue to reach out if you think of anything in the meantime. Uh, but I really appreciate everyone being here tonight and sharing your thoughts. Have a good night. Thank you, you all too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.